Hello and welcome to this week's special episode with guest Beth Peterson of Unwind Body Work in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I've known Beth for probably almost a year now and prior to her, I had never heard of Thai massage, didn't know what it was, didn't even know I needed it in my life or the benefits that came from it, but she's really taught me a lot about not only what it is, but why it is important and needed in my self-care journey and my wellness journey so that I can live better and healthier. And you're going to hear her talk more about Thai massage and what it is and who it's for and the differences between Thai massage and Swedish massage, which is the type of massage you're probably used to doing if you've done any type of professional massage. We talk a lot more about ADHD and how that impacts impacts her as a person and then even within her business and building a business. She also opens up about some struggles that she has had the past year or so with POTS, which is a heart condition. And her overall mission is to empower all individuals to maintain their active lifestyles by improving range of motion, releasing pain and tension, and encouraging home care. We talk a lot about how she got into Thai massage and her the purpose behind it and behind what she does. And one of those things that we talk about is how she sees each person as an individual. And, you know, maybe when you go into different services, whether it's in the healthcare, like the hospital or any service that you go to, if you sometimes feel like you don't, they don't see you, they don't hear you, they don't understand or they don't think that you, or maybe you just feel like you're another transaction. Uh, So we talk a lot more about how she is the complete opposite of that and her drive, like the drive that she has to make sure that each person that she sees is seen and heard and is taken care of. If you want to learn more about her services, her and uh, check out her website or Instagram, if you would like to check out her website, it is fallsunwind.com, so F-A-L-L-S-U-N-W-I-N-D.com, and she's also on Instagram, at Unwind Body Work. But before we jump into that, November 6th, so next Monday, I am launching with Brandy of Be Collective Wellness, a four-week wellness journey. So we're calling this Empowered for More, which this is like Empowered for More 2.0 if you were around when I did my first challenge for the Empowered for More challenge. So a four-week wellness journey. This is going to be for women who are ready to unlock the secrets to their hormones, ignite their health, and become empowered for more. This is for you if you constantly feel stuck in the yo-yo diet cycle, you're frustrated by it, you don't know where to start when it comes to fitness and nutrition, you feel like nutrition is overwhelming and confusing, and you don't know where it starts when it comes to workouts, you want to stop restricting different foods that you love, You've been at war with the scale and you're wanting to do things a little differently. Empowered for More is really going to be something that's going to not only teach you different habits that you can sustain and you can incorporate into your lifestyle, but it's also going to be simplified. Nutrition is going to be simplified. The exercise is going to be simplified. And we're going to not focus on the scale. We're going to focus on the things that really matter, like how you're feeling, how your energy levels are, the fact that you're maybe able to do more after this this four-week journey, or even to help shift your mindset from the scale to how you're feeling, and to really help you flip the script in the health and fitness industry, and to help you become empowered for more than just the scale, help you become empowered for more than the diet culture BS that's been ingrained in us for years, like the work out more, eat less mentality, more than letting that number on the scale dictate your happiness and help you reframe what health means to you. Something that's different about this challenge versus the other one is that Brandy is really going to dive deeper into the menstrual cycle. So each week we're going to focus on a phase of the cycle and how you can support your hormones and your phase through the nutrition and fitness aspect. Now, we're also not saying that we're going to fix everything in these four weeks, right? Like this is kind of just a starting point and to help you start the process of making these changes last and into taking a new approach mentally and physically, and of course, become empowered for more. So if you'd like more details on this, check the link in my bio to either sign up or to just check out the details. And there is a small 
$28 investment because what you pay for, you pay attention to. So we're going to add that element of accountability to this. So again, the link will be in the show notes, or you can also go to www.b, and that's with two E's, so B-E-E, collectivewellness.com slash empowered dash four, F-O-R, dash more. All right, that's all I got to say about that. Let's jump into today's episode with Beth of Unwind Body Work. Finally got this together yeah. after a long time. A year or something. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. We've been talking about it. <laughs> no, at least a year. Yay. But I got Beth from Unwind Body Work here in Sioux Falls um, to talk about Thai massage and a whole lot of things. Because I want to talk about like ADHD brain and all of that too. Wacky, anything wacky anything. brains. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So first I want to know, just tell us more about like who you are, what you do. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm Beth. I own Unwind Body Work. So we're a massage therapy clinic in Sioux Falls. Um, we, I specialize in Thai massage, but we've just expanded our team. So now we offer Swedish massage, deep tissue massage, cupping, hot stone, gua sha, all sorts of things. Um, we have self-care products, supplements, um, all sorts of stuff. So uh, yeah. How did you get into Thai massage? Yeah, like, I want the whole backstory. How, whole did you, backstory. how did you get into doing it? What, like, when did you know you want to do this? Why all of that? Okay. Um, so I didn't really want, I didn't know that I wanted to do Thai massage initially. Like it wasn't something that I had planned to. Um, it was something that I, when I started college, I went, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Like I was kind of like feeling around different, like different things and mm-hmm. decided I initially decided I wanted to go for like physical therapy or chiropractic, but I had to work my way through college. So I was like, well, if I'm going to go get my doctorate, I'm going to have to find something that I can do like before then Mm -hmm. in order to like pay my way through college essentially. So I was, so I landed on massage therapy. Um, And so I got into the program, but I just fell in love with massage therapy. And I was like, well, if I can help people to the same level and not have to like go through a whole doctorate program, sign me up. So yeah. I did that. And then we, um, we had a guest speaker who came in who was a Thai massage practitioner and he, um, like taught us like the basics about Thai massage. And that was the moment where that was like, love at first sight. I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it had a lot of the same like elements of physical therapy that I was really interested in with the stretch and the mobility and getting people better, like in line with their body and just kind of like stretching out the tight contracted muscle tissue. Um, so to me, it just made really a lot of sense in my brain. It just kind of clicked. And plus it was fun. Like I, I just enjoyed like all the movement aspect of it, Mm -hmm. um, just really kind of worked for me. So that was pretty much why. And then from there, I was like, well, this is like, I, I wanted to open my own practice where I was only doing time massage, um, at the time. Yeah. It was about five years after I graduated when I opened on my body work and started doing exclusively doing time massage. So nice. So how'd you come up with unwind body work? Where did that name come from? It's just kind of like, came to me. I um I went down to St. Louis with a friend of mine to to learn Thai massage. Um that's where I took my first class in it. And we were kind of just like rattling off like different names because I had kind mm-hmm. of you know told my friend like oh hey you know I'm thinking about opening up my own practice you know and uh she's like well I think she asked me or I might have asked myself I don't remember exactly mm-hmm. but like how do you feel after you get a massage? a Thai massage. And I was like, unwind, unwound really was what kind of came to mind was like, I felt unwound when I got a Thai massage, like afterwards. So I was like, Oh, yeah, like, so then I was like, unwind body work. Yeah, Yeah. because I didn't want to call it like massage or spa, because I didn't want us to be like a spa. I didn't want it to be like, pigeonholed into only doing massage. You know, so I wanted to have like, the aspect of body work as in like, it, it can be massage therapy, like as the, like the Western massage therapy, like Swedish or deep tissue massage, but mm-hmm. it can also be Thai massage or, you know, it can encompass a lot more 
to do. It can be fitness. It can be, you know, yoga, all those things are mm-hmm. all under the body work umbrella. Um, so I just didn't want to be like pigeonholed. So I don't think I ever knew that. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever like actually asked you like, how did that yeah. name? Reg- okay. That's cool. And I like that because like things that you always talk about is like helping people with pain and uh, that pain can come from fitness. It can come from any other activity, like um, mm-hmm. like so many different things, you know? So that's really cool. But one of the questions that I get from a lot of people is like, cause I say Thai massage and they're like, well, what is that? And I always tell them, you know, it's like stretching and like things like that, mm-hmm. uh, stretching, twisting, but what would be the, so just kind of go into brief differences between Thai massage, Swedish massage. Those are the two main ones, I think, but yeah. any others too that you want to talk about? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people say like Swedish massage or deep tissue massage are kind of, they're not super, they're not exactly the same, but they're somewhat interchangeable, um, in Western culture, um, Swedish massage, Sorry, I'm so like, there's a lot that I can say right yeah. now. So my brain is like information That's, overload yep. in my head and I'm trying to like slice it out. Yep. Um, so Swedish massage, obviously derived from the West and deep tissue massage is just like a similar technique, but you're trying to get into like the deeper tissues of the muscle. Thai massage is like the opposite of Swedish massage. Mm-hmm. So if you think of Swedish massage as like, you're going to get undressed. You're going to get on a table underneath a sheet. You're going to have cream and oil and lotion, and they're going to like massage the muscles and rub them out. Thai massage, you're going to stay fully clothed. You're on a mat on the floor, and we're just going to move you and stretch you out. And so it's a lot of mobility therapy. It's a lot of like, uh, some people call it lazy yoga or passive yoga. Mm -hmm. So we can get like a really deep stretch. We can get a lot of myofascial work. We can, um, you know, work on like all the joints and everything in a session for Thai massage. Whereas with Swedish massage, you'll get a lot of that like benefit of like relaxation and bringing down the nervous system. And you get that like the skin to skin contact, which is really good for like just that nurturing feeling that Mm -hmm. people kind of crave that, that touch aspect. So there's different benefits to both, but yeah. So how does one know which one they should do? Like what, you know, like what, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it's good to do both, but yeah. What would be like, if someone's listening, okay, but like they're asking themselves, okay, well, how do I know which one I should do? Yeah. Generally, um, time massage is great for like chronic pain conditions. So a lot of the things that I treat would be like migraines, um, sciatic pain, EDS, or, um, any sort of like connective tissue problem, um, fibromyalgia, mm-hmm all of those kind of things, like some of these chronic pain conditions can really benefit from Thai massage. We can't cure anything, obviously, but we can at least get the body into a more functional state. And then I guess like if you even like high stress, so the benefits for like Swedish massage would be to those people who have like really high stress life, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, environment, work life balance, maybe they just need to kind of relax and um, just take some time to like be quiet and, you know, have that feeling of, um, somebody kind of taking care of them. So there's, um, there's that. And then also like you would get some of the same benefits from Swedish massage. It's just different. So really what I tell people is that the biggest thing is like, what kind of touch do you prefer? And so, for me, for example, we kind of talked about this already, but um, I have some sensory issues. Uh, so like, I don't enjoy the feeling of like oil on my skin being rubbed into my skin, but I really enjoy the, the stretch and feeling of pulling and that feeling of like the joints kind of like kind of separating and kind of moving like that for me is more like is a better feeling for me personally sense mm-hmm. for sensory. Um, and then some people probably prefer like more of that, like feeling of being rubbed or feeling of like lotion and that kind of thing. So it just kind of depends on, yeah, it's all personal. Yeah. And I really think like, you got to try it to understand it. And then you, and then it's like, then you can, I think have a better decision, like, uh, think through like which one you want every so often or whatever, but yeah, it's like, it's kind of easy to explain, but also like you just have to experience it. Exactly. And I would recommend to anybody to just like try one or the other Mm -hmm. and, um, try both and see which one resonates best for you. Mm -hmm. Um, because you might be surprised. Mm -hmm. So either. Yeah. 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 Um, do you have us like a 
story that comes to mind, like a success type of story of someone like a client of yours that like had a lot of pain or a lot of like something. And yes, sure. I have so many stories. Okay. <laughs> like I can't even tell you, like, I can't even think of a specific one because I have a lot, so many, but yeah. I have had um, several people come to me like daily migraines came to me after three weeks. Um, like we had a, a care plan where they come in to me like once a week for, you know, a certain period of time. And then at, but after like a certain amount of time, their migraines are gone. Wow. or, um, and like I said, I can't cure anything. So I'm not like promising to cure anybody's yeah. migraines, but um, <laughs> what has happened, but <laughs> like, they just, they feel better and yeah. they have less tension and mm-hmm. everything moves easier. And so they're able to move easier too. And that's another thing too, is like a lot yeah. of the conditions come with like, you have to do your own work as well. So it's not just me, like I'm not out here just like, oh, okay, I'm going to massage you. And then that's it. Right. But then when somebody can get over this hump of pain during the pain site, you know, they're, they're in pain and then they they don't want to move. They don't want to like work out or exercise or like do yoga or any of the things that they can do to get well. If you're in that much pain, you can't do those things. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is we can at least reduce some of the pains they can start to do the things that they need to do in order to get over that hump. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one of the biggest things. Um, Things like, uh, yeah, I mean, I have, I just have so many success stories. Yeah. I can't really think of. So, okay. This question came to mind. Why are you so passionate? I think that I like, I know the answer, but why are you so passionate about helping people get through pain and like not get through pain, but like relieve the pain? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I have chronic pain conditions myself. So, um, I have suffered from migraines since I was probably about 14. Um, I have hypermobility, which, um, you know, comes with a lot of joint pain and, um, like <laughs> laxity in my joints and things like that. So that comes with a lot of chronic pain. So I've had chronic pain most of my life. And so, but when I find, when I found out that like you can get through it, and somebody can be there to like help you at least listen to what you're saying and understand and appreciate that. Yeah, there is pain there. Then you can, can start to get through that. So, mm-hmm. um, I wanted to be that person for other people, um, kind of living by the golden rule of treat other people, how you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. I always wanted somebody to just listen to me and understand that. Yes, I am in pain and it's not all in my head. Mm-hmm. those kind of things. So I just wanted to be that person for other people. That's awesome. I feel like a lot of people will go to like the doctor or we'll, we'll go somewhere and, or talk to someone and then they explain to them what they're feeling or they do have pain somewhere or whatever, and they can't figure it out. They don't know what it is. Or like, they just don't feel like they're being heard by the person. And it's like, it's really you know, frustrating. Yeah. And it's really um invalidating to hear that. Yeah. Like, Oh, it's all in your head or, Oh, you know, it's, it's whatever. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I just, I, I don't think that people should be treated that way. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I just wanted to like to help people in that way, (laughs) but then also, um, there's also another aspect to that as well as, um, when I was in high school, I used to work with adults with developmental disabilities. And one of my favorite things to do was to help them with their like physical therapy exercises. Cause it was just really, really fun. Cause you know, I, I had some clients that were, got really excited about mm-hmm. doing their stretches and their exercises and stuff. But then I noticed a direct correlation between independence and actually doing those stretches and exercises. So I found that, um, the people who, and this is all anecdotal, but the people that I worked with who were consistently doing their physical therapy exercises and stretches were more independent than somebody with you know, probably the same amount of impairment who refused, consistently Mm -hmm. refused those exercises. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that kind of correlation, like in that independence. And so I noticed that, well, you know, if you stay active and you move and you stretch and you do these things, you work with your range of motion and try to increase that range of motion that will ultimately probably keep you more independent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know you did that in high school, Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, That's uh, yep. I totally agree. I mean, I see it too, like within training people, I guess, mm-hmm. and like helping them with mobility and stuff, but yeah. okay. What would set you apart from 
someone else who does time massage? What makes you different? I'm trying to get at what? <laughs> Nothing. I was just asked this question not too long ago by somebody else. And I was like, I don't know how to answer this because it's all individual, right? Mm-hmm. And because, you know, somebody might, I might resonate with somebody and, but not with somebody else. And that's yeah. okay. Like I, I might not be the practitioner for every single person. Right. And that's okay. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, the, the reason that somebody would come to me would be because for some reason, whatever I do specifically, um, whether it's my personality or my technique or whatever seems to resonate with them and seems to help them. Mm-hmm. Well, we, you know, after digging a little bit deeper into this question, what came to light was that because I'm an individualist and I look at every single person as an individual, that's why people come to me because, <laughs> um, because just got me because <laughs> they, they get that individual care and they're not treated like another number or just like, Oh, just another person with migraine or just another person with sciatica or another shoulder issue. But I actually try to dig deep into who they are as a person, how they got to where they are. And it's really like kind of transformative care. Like we can really get um, very, very like individualized with the treatment. And I have a insatiable curiosity where I'm always trying to figure out, okay, why? Mm-hmm. Why is this happening? Like, why, why do you have shoulder pain? And is it because your right foot is out? Is your, is your foot hurt? Is that why you have shoulder pain? Yeah. Um, things like that. So, but I'm able to kind of ask those questions, not like, not even just verbally, but I have a lot of, there's a lot of communication that goes on in a session with the body, with the person's body mm-hmm. and how they're communicating with me. It's a lot of nonverbal communication, but then I'm able to, to really kind of pinpoint like where things are coming from mm-hmm. and then address that because I'm really about like the, okay, where, what's the origin of this mm-hmm. issue mm-hmm. and how do we address that? Because mm-hmm. otherwise you're just chasing pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super important. Mm-hmm. Like if I go anywhere and I am treated as treated as an individual and even like the person takes time to like, not just get to know me, get to know me, but like, like you said, finding the root cause of whatever it is, being curious, like that makes me more likely to like want to come back because you feel seen, you feel heard, you feel like they're going to really take care of you. Like it's just, and it should be that way, like individualized. <laughs> like it really should. Everyone is different. Mm-hmm. What else did I say about that? Yeah. I don't remember, but yeah, I just think that's super important. And I would not have like, I'm glad we're doing this because I would not have known that about you or about like any of anything about anything. Mm-hmm. It's like, Oh, time massage. Okay. Well, it's just another massage. I'm just going to go in mm-hmm. and then that's it. But it is like so much more than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really transformative mm-hmm. um, and we can get really, um, we can get a lot. I mean, there's, there's even some energy work that's involved in that too. If you're, you know, if you're into that and, um, so time massage is really pretty cool. Tell us more about that. So, uh, well, so time massage is kind of inherently it's a Buddhist practice and not that Buddhism is inherently Thai, but time massage is inherently Buddhist. So there's a lot that goes into that. Um, just, you know, culturally from like the Thai people and, and everything. So I like to pay homage to like the culture that it came from, but, um, so there's a lot of like that energy work with it as well. Um, you start, you know, so it goes into like element theory of like the body. And, you know, sometimes people have talked about like Chinese meridians and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. And that's kind of energy work in the same, in a similar sense. So there's like the element theory of like fire, water, earth, air, and that goes into time massages. Time massages has that level of in, in it has some. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. I'm currently learning a little bit more about that because I'm trying to, because I, I learned in the West, I was taught like more of a Western time massage practice from a Western perspective. So right now, like five years after starting time massage practice, now I'm like starting to kind of dive more into some of that and like learn a little bit more about it. So I'm not the expert on all of that. Oh, like, I want to hear more. I'm still learning a little bit about it, but um, I know that there is some like energetic aspect of it as well. I love that. So, mm-hmm. I like energy work. I mean, I've done like Reiki. Yeah. Oh, uh, once or twice. Maybe but time massage. So. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, yeah. And it's I just, mean, it's part of it. It's not yeah. like it. And I think that energy work, you know, 
this is my theory. Like, I think it's, it's inherent in all of the things that we do. Like, sure. I think that yes. massage therapy, even, even Swedish or deep tissue massage, I feel like if you get a massage, you're probably getting some energy mm-hmm. work as well, because you can't separate your energetic body from your physical body. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> like it all makes sense. I just never put like, put it together. Yeah. Cause wow. you can't separate. Yeah. So like when you do some of, okay, so I just, this comes to mind, like at the very end, when you do like the your child's pose mm-hmm. and then like all of that, and then it, yep. I always picture like negative energy away. And like, yeah. so there's, and you do that yep. every single time. Yeah. Yeah. And those are called nerve strokes. The technical term is nerve strokes, but it's just a very light feather stroke. Um, and yes, it, it has some like, you know aspect of getting yeah. rid of the energy or the yeah. needs sort of thing just mm-hmm. kind of it's good finishing finishing it's a good like yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i love it yeah and then even like uh with the feet stuff so when i start i start with the feet and when i start i i take my thumb on like the heel of the foot and what that does is it says to like open up the energy channel and then at some point then i get up to the head mm-hmm. and then i press like on the top of the scalp and that will close that energy yeah so it's really kind of cool because I've done some like chakra work people I have a pendulum and sometimes I'll do some like chakra checking before and after so um, I'll check somebody's like chakra alignment and I'll notice like maybe one or two or some of them might be out of alignment and then after a session then I'll recheck it and then I'll notice that they're fully aligned holy shit their chakras yeah what (laughs) Yeah, I don't know if we've ever done that. Oh, we haven't. Yeah, we could do it sometime. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah, no, I didn't know that. That's super yeah. cool. That's pretty cool. And that makes like I, that even this far like sets you apart too. I think. Well, because I don't, I don't, I can't speak for other time massage people, but any other massages that I've done, whether it's time massage or not, well, I've not done time massage anywhere else, but so massages, but it's never that. And maybe I just don't know. I didn't know that they were doing the energy type of work, but I don't know. That's really cool. And some don't. Some do, some don't. It right. it really depends on on who you go to and mm-hmm. how open they are to it, and if they're yeah. interested in it. You know, some people are only like pain science or only about the the science, and and that's totally fine. Like, I mean, there's it, there's it's definitely valid uh, to really question mm-hmm. all these things and like think about like, okay, what's really going on here? But I think that there are also things that science can't quite explain yet. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit more open to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I still question everything, though, because yeah. I'm still like, I don't know. I'm skeptical. <laughs> skeptical of a lot of things yeah. all the time. Well, that's but okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because that curiosity. Though. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So you started this five years ago, right? This Ish, business, about, yeah. This, okay. Mm-hmm. So you have been in Sioux Falls. What it, so you've been doing it just time massage. Now you've added people. What's yeah. What's to come? maybe a vision or plan yeah. or can you share a lot of exciting things i think well first and foremost i have so i have a team of um two massage therapists and i have an assistant including and then there's myself too uh so i think ultimately we will end up having to grow into probably a larger facility at some point my next step for me is to start to teach i want to teach continuing education for massage therapists. And so that'll look like me teaching Thai massage. I want to do a class of like Swedish Thai fusion. Mm-hmm. So I want to teach um, people who want to stay with doing like table Thai massage or table massage, like Swedish massage. I want to teach them how to add stretching and add some elements of Thai massage mm-hmm. into their sessions. Mm-hmm. So that way it's not quite as scary for people to mm-hmm maybe think about adding some time massage into, into their life. So there's that a yeah, larger facility, probably more, more staff, more mm-hmm. uh, bigger team. Probably I, I don't want to get too big, but you know, yeah. we just kind of want to grow. Um, mm-hmm. We're definitely in growth mode and then um, teaching. Yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right Stay now. in Sioux Falls too, probably. Yeah. 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 That's just where you're going to be. That's yeah. cool. Exciting. Unless somebody wants to, you know, open up an unwind bodywork franchise. Oh, right. <laughs> well, yeah, you know. And we go nationwide with it, become the next massage envy. <laughs> oh yeah. Well I forgot. Like massage envy is is that that is like a franchise? I don't know. I think it's a franchise. Oh, it's okay. either a franchise it's or it's like corporate. I don't oh, know. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's they're everywhere. hmm I don't want to get that big. <laughs> yeah. No, that would be a lot. So okay, being a business owner, mm-hmm. let's shift into that. What 
So like if someone's listening and they maybe want to do this and own a business and whatever, like what, what have been some of the challenges and maybe some just like takeaways from being a business owner? Business owners are the only people who will give up working 40 yeah. hours a week to work 80 hours a week because they don't want to work 40 hours no, a week. <laughs> I saw that one and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> Um, working constantly. I, I have a hard time turning things off. Mm -hmm. You don't really, you know, I think the idea of like work life balance is kind of a misnomer. Um, I don't think that you can ever separate just like you can't separate your body from your energy or your mind, your spirit, your mental, you know, self from your body, your physical body. Um, I don't think that you can separate your work self from your home self and all of these things. I think some people are maybe better at compartmentalizing mm -hmm. than other people, but um, I think there are different seasons in life. So some some seasons you might work a little bit harder and some seasons you might have a little bit more rest. Mm -hmm. So lately I've been in this season of working really hard, follow, following from like a season where I was resting a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so I think that life just kind of ebbs and flows that way. But um, business has been really fun. I really enjoy yeah. owning a business. I don't think I would ever go back to working for somebody. Mm -hmm. I kind of struggle with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have, I have a lot of ideas, a lot of creativity, a lot of like thoughts of my own. And mm -hmm. sometimes I think that can be, make it really hard for me to be an employee. I feel like if someone's a business owner or they want to be a business owner, that's like, they struggle. Cause that's a, yeah, mm -hmm. a big thing for me too. Yeah. So because I have some of these challenges. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think that I could, I never really thrived in an environment where I was an employee. I've, I've worked jobs. I've worked several jobs before and, but I never really felt like that was, um, right for me. Like I never really mm -hmm. felt like I ever fit in anywhere. I never, I always felt like I was an outcast or like, I didn't really feel like I was, doing myself any justice, nor was mm -hmm. I doing the company any justice for, cause I, I was a really, really hard worker, but then I just didn't feel like fulfilled, I guess, mm -hmm. but owning a business and being able to see the fruits of my own labor and in order to, in to like cast my own vision and do all of that, that has been extremely rewarding and fulfilling mm -hmm. to me. So I've been, I probably, I probably make less money but then I would if I were to just go work for somebody. Yep. However, I'm a lot happier. Mm -hmm. And for me, life is too short and I'd rather live it being happy than I would living and being rich. So. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Preach to that. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I remember always thinking like I I would much rather like I never understood the people that would like stay in a job that they hated. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, that wasn't even an option. I was like, after college, I didn't even go look for a job that I didn't knew I didn't want, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah. But I like how you worded that, like how you described the work-life balance and how there it's like, you can't really separate that or like you just don't. And because it's, I think just because being a business owner, it's hard because you do just work all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's not like, I mean, I don't, I won't take calls after 7 p.m. or I won't, right, yeah. I won't answer emails. So you have like some boundaries. I mean, there, there are definitely boundaries. And I think that, but I think that's different than like, you know, when people talk about work-life balance, I think, I think that's a little bit different. Like, yeah. but yeah, I mean, there's definitely boundaries. Like I have, I have my, my office hours where I'm available for calls and emails mm -hmm. and texts and those kind of things. After that, then it's, then it's me time. Then it's mm -hmm. time with my, my family and everything. So yeah. Yeah. You have yeah, to have some boundaries sense. there too. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise people walk all over you. Which is kind of so, hard to do for yeah. me anyway. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> yeah. I think that's hard for a lot of, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think it's especially hard for women too. Yeah, for sure. So, yep. Yeah. So then, okay. Can we talk a little bit about ADHD brain? Yes. You should can. Okay. So let's, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything specific I want to talk about, but just like having ADHD, like, okay. So for getting massages, but then also being a business owner mm -hmm. with that too. Anything you want to say about that? Yeah. Um, how do I want to open this can of worms? <laughs> so, okay. So yeah, business owner. So I think there's like a crazy statistic that there are like so many people with ADHD end up becoming business owners. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. Like there's like a lot. And I think it's because, so if you're a business owner, you know that you have to wear a ton of different hats. Mm -hmm. Like you have to 
be all of the things, especially yep. if you're a solo, solo practitioner, like a solo business owner. You have to wear all the hats at some point. And if you have ADHD, you're really, really good at switching your focus from one thing to another. In fact, you probably excel at it. And so, it, and then it helps you to not get so bored too, because like, oh, you know, I get to do this today and then I get to do this other thing today. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that I found like when I was working just jobs, other places, it was like, I get so bored because I was always doing the same thing every single day. And I was like, this is unbearable. Yeah. I'm so bored. I need like mental stimulation, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I need to constantly be like learning something and constantly be like, you know, doing something new or doing something mm-hmm. different in order to like help my brain. So that's the fun thing about business ownership because I can do all of these things mm-hmm. and then I'm never bored and I'm never like unfulfilled mm-hmm. because I'm always learning something new or I'm always like doing something different. So that's been really fun. I think that's probably the biggest thing when it comes to like ADHD. And that. Yeah. Do you ever find yourself like, um, not be well okay so almost like it's you're you go from one thing to the next too much and it's hard to focus on one thing to get mm-hmm. something done oh yeah all the time yeah that's why I had to hire an assistant because <laughs> I I um I struggle with staying uh on task for things that like so that that's you know I I say like oh this is really great to be a business owner and have ADHD but then it also I mean I'm not gonna lie like there's it's definitely a struggle mm-hmm. like there is definitely a struggle with it because I have a hard time staying focused when I need to stay focused. So while I might ha- get into periods where I'm like hyper hyper focusing on something, I might completely ignore all of my other things that I need to get done. Mm-hmm. Like for example, like bookkeeping work, forget about it. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my accountant asked me for like three months for me to send her my receipts. And for the life of me, I couldn't get myself to just gather my receipts that I already had like pile up. That is how I am. And get it to her. Yes. And so it's things like that where it's like, I, like I physically, I know I can do it. I can physically do it, Mm -hmm. but there's a block in my brain where I'm like, can't do it. No, that's not happening. Even if I have all the time in the world, can't do that one simple task. Yes. And so that's definitely a struggle. (laughs) It's definitely a struggle. So, um, I really, and uh, so, yeah, I needed to find somebody who could help me uh, with some of the smaller tasks that I just can't seem to do. Mm -hmm. Um, But then I I had talked with somebody else recently about this and kind of put it into perspective that like, as a business owner, your job isn't to do all of those tasks. Mm -hmm. Like your job is to do the big picture thinking, the strategizing, the like, let's move this train forward. Your job as a business owner isn't to organize files. Any tasks that you can delegate, delegate. That's mm-hmm. what I found recently. I like um, but the problem with business is when you start a business, you have more time than you have money. Mm-hmm. And then at some point that pendulum shifts. So then you end up having more money than you have time. So then at that point, that's when you can start to delegate yeah. some of those tasks that you just cannot get yourself to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it hard to delegate some things like just, or was it, I know the assistant was not, was like, yes, get, do all the things. Oh, Take the phone calls. Yeah. I, I have found that I really enjoy delegating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and not that I like enjoy telling people what to do. It's right. It's not about that. It's about like, I love having that support and I really need to have that support. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I found that like, that has been really helpful for me and I've been able to accomplish more because of it. Right. Yeah. So I've been able, so because I'm having that support in some areas that like, that's not my job. Um, like it's not my job to organize files or it's not my job to answer phone calls all the time. Mm-hmm. That's, that can be somebody else's job. So now my job can be like the big picture thinking, the strategizing, the like, okay, what's next? Mm-hmm. The planning, the yes. like, okay, the, you know, all the things that I have to do to get to that next level, then I can actually spend the time that I need to do to focus on those kind of things instead of just wasting my time doing things that like, I just don't want to do. Right. Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. Brings up more time too and get more done. Yeah. Um, So now that you have a team of people Mm -hmm. and 
Uh, yeah. So you have the team of people. It's not just you anymore. How, what's the shift been like, like to teach them your core values and, you know, mission behind on why, on why, like, has that been challenging? Has that been like, it, you know, what, what's that been like? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things, like you just have to constantly like kind of drill that in, but I have a really good team right now and everybody seems to be on this, on the page that I'm on. Mm-hmm. So I haven't really run into any issues with like, Oh, you know, you're not on my, on the page that mm-hmm. I want to be on. So um, everybody that, that works for me right now, they're, that's good. That makes a huge like, difference. Yeah. Like having people yeah. that are. Well, and that's the thing is like when you're hiring people and you're looking to expand your team, you have to like find the people that fit with your core values already, mm-hmm. because otherwise yeah. you're just constantly going to be battling that. Yep. You know, it's, that makes it's, sense. Yep. it's better to like align yourself with people who have the same vision and core values that you have than to like try to mold somebody who doesn't have those values into what you want them to have because mm-hmm. ultimately you can't change people right yep so you just have to accept them That's and true. yeah so then make that decision on if that's somebody that aligns with what you want so mm-hmm. yep. yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense um okay let's see what else do i want to talk about i think that's all that for like the questions, whatever that I had, but is there anything about Thai massage that you wanted to make sure people knew about or you wanted to talk about or anything like that? Well, I think that you also want to talk about like ADHD and yes. sensory stuff. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So we had talked, we had touched on that a little bit earlier, yep. um, but the, I remember that was a question and then I got on this whole <laughs> tangent and then I'm trying to go back to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. That's, ADHD. Mm-hmm. So, um, so sensory things. Um, one of the things that I found like for me with time massage, cause you'd asked me if I like to get my massages mm-hmm. or if I do, uh, I, I prefer to get like a time massage than to get Swedish massage personally. Um, I will get Swedish massage or deep tissue massage sometimes. Um, it just depends on how I'm feeling, but that has to do with some sensory issues that I have. So that's one thing that I want to touch on a little bit. If you're somebody who doesn't like to be touched or has some sensory issues, try Thai massage because I don't like to be like massaged, like with oil and cream and stuff like that. I Mm -hmm. would prefer to be like stretched out. So I'll typically get like Thai massage just because like I enjoy that feeling of stretch. Did we have to talk about this? Actually, while we were, uh, well, I know for sure before recording, but did we talk about while we were recording? I don't know. I don't know. I thought I might have. Now that I'm saying it again, I'm like, I actually we probably, probably, we probably already like, did talk well, about this. Well, we'll figure, we'll see what's wrong with me. <laughs> I'm on like a different uh, planet today, I guess. Yeah, that's funny. Is it hard for you? Like you have an ADHD, oh, like, yeah, yeah just relax. like laying there to relax. Yeah. That's what you were going to ask me. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah. So with time massage, because there's so much movement involved, I don't really feel that like itch to move because like I'm constantly like shaking my leg or like... T- moving and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um so but when I get like a Swedish deep tissue massage um sometimes I'll feel like kind of antsy and like wiggly um which can be kind of hard because like but I just I got to this point where I'm like you know what I don't even care if my body is telling me I need to move then I just need to move yeah I just listen to my body and like okay you know and then I'll move and that's just what I started doing yeah but before like before I started to recognize that and have that like relationship with my body, I guess, to allow myself permission to do those things. It, it would be like torturous for me to get a massage. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I have to stay still. And then I couldn't. Yes. But my body was screaming at me like, you need to move. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, I think this is something that like, as a whole, like not, not just, okay. So like as a whole, I feel like as we get older, we kind of lose touch with that part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I saw, I don't know if it was Instagram or like what it was, but um, it was someone, I don't even know what she does exactly, but she was basically talking about how like as kids, we do weird people, like kids like just do weird shit and Mm -hmm. like move. And I even saw a video on TikTok recently where this kid was like dancing, but it was like a weird, just weird, but like she was doing what she was feeling Mm -hmm. and we lose that part of ourselves. And we think yeah. that, okay, we need to sit still or we need, cause we're mm-hmm. taught to sit still and be quiet yeah. when we're a kid. Yeah. 
So yeah. like, it's a, yeah, it's important to yeah. like, even like go back to that. Yeah. There's a lot of like, like primal movements that we should be able to have mm-hmm. that we end up losing um, because we're not moving our bodies in those ranges of motions. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, like a deep squat, for example, oh, yeah. like, you know, just Maybe getting a squat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just getting down that perfect spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so things like that, like, I mean, we should be able to have that range motion through mm-hmm. our, our lives, but, um, yeah, somewhere along the, the line, we get told to sit mm-hmm. down and shut up and, yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> like, yep. I, I don't know. I, I struggle with authority anyway. So like to be told that it was just like, it wasn't fun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Can we talk about like with you having pots mm. mm-hmm. and and how it that kind of like affects okay how that plays a role into you wanting to help people and then the other part would be like you while you're massaging how has that changed or not changed but like does it really affect I don't know what I'm asking about when it comes to that so Mm -hmm. having pots yeah so um so I have pots which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome which uh, for the longest for word people ever, who don't know, it's just, yeah. to call it POTS, but yeah. which stems from that hypermobility, the elasticity that I have in my joints. I have elasticity throughout my, all of my connective tissue, mm-hmm. which includes my arteries and veins. Mm-hmm. Um, so that means that when I stand up, all of my blood just falls to my feet, mm-hmm. uh, which causes me to get dizzy, lightheaded. I could faint. I haven't, knock on wood. You know, so it ca- it causes some problems. Um, I had a lot of problems with it last year, mm-hmm. um, and that was when I found you. And so we started working on that and strengthening my legs has been like the number one most helpful thing. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciate you for that <laughs> um, because although I'm an aerialist, that was a lot of like core and upper body strength mm-hmm. involved in that. And there's some like leg stuff, but it was mostly like just you know, stretch to do splits kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, and like hip flexors. So there wasn't a lot of like leg strengthening specifically in aerial silks, mm-hmm. um, which is what I do for like my main workout. But then, so then I was like, okay, I need to get my legs stronger. Mm-hmm. And so then when we started working on that, that's really helped a lot, but that was kind of a long, a long game. So mm-hmm. it wasn't like something where, oh, I just do a few squats and now immediately I'm better. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a lot of like trial before like it was really challenging before I started getting like over that hump where I was doing a lot of things like drinking 120 ounces of water a day and you know like 40 of those ounces would be salts and wearing compression tights every day and things like that and there were sometimes you know during a sessions where I felt like I was almost gonna faint and sometimes I still like if I have like an episodic day or something I might feel like while I'm working, I might feel a little like lightheaded or dizzy or something, but um, I really try to tune into my breath and like try to like slow my heart rate down a little bit. So it hasn't really been like a huge issue where it can, couldn't work for me personally, but I know that a lot of people have it like a lot harder with that. So mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't want to like discount anybody's experience with it because I know like my experience with POTS is probably pretty mild, but it was still affected me. I feel like that has played a, like a big role too in the fact that and maybe it hasn't, but like in the fact that you see everyone as an individual and you want people to be seen and heard because you mm-hmm. didn't feel seen and heard in the beginning right. of that. Yeah. Right. Like from when we talked about. Oh God. Yeah. Doctors. Um, I had, yeah, I'd been through in and out of the doctors and told, well, you're normal, even though like, or I don't know what's going on. It, it was a lot of like, I don't know what's wrong with you. And be, even though they were doing orthostatic tests where they would have me lay down, I would measure, I think typically like my resting heart rate would be like around 70. And then I would stand up and after a minute, it'd be like 125. Mm-hmm. And that's not normal to have mm-hmm. that high of a high, high heart rate increase when just going from laying down to standing up. Cause usually your heart rate does spike like maybe up to like 20 beats per minute and then it'll like level itself out but mine will go up like 30, 40 beats per minute and it'll stay there. Mm-hmm. So, but then to, to have that and then me like doing all of the research, because I do a lot of research on my, on my own, knowing that like, Hey, you know, this is what I think this is. Is this possibly the answer to what I'm looking for? And then just being to, to be told like, 
oh, I don't know. Or, um, you know, just being like dismissed over it was yeah. really, really hard. And uh, I, I spent, I like broke down crying at the doctor's office like several times because I just didn't feel like I was being taken seriously. Or uh, there was one time when I was at the doctor's and I was explaining all of all of my symptoms and all the things that were going on and what I was thinking and what I was feeling. And uh, the entire time her back was turned toward me and like, she didn't even look at me at, at all. Like I just, I felt like not a person. Oh my God. And so it was really dehumanizing yeah. I guess, for the, the experience. So, so finally I, um, they, they had suggested that I take an EEG test to check for seizures and I know what seizures are because I've worked with people who've had seizures Mm -hmm. and my office mate has seizures. Like I know a lot of people who have had seizures, like throughout my entire life, I've, I've been around people with seizures. And, um, I also like have had people who've also witnessed seizures, witness my episodes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, this is not a seizure. I have tremors, which is associated with POTS. So sometimes if I get like a POTS episode, I'll get like tremors Mm -hmm. in my hands. And so I was explaining the tremors and then this person like latched onto the tremors and was like, well, you need an EEG and, you know, we're, we're going to have to like revisit like the driving laws in South Dakota. And like, they were essentially like, what I felt was like threatening my driver's license oh my God. <laughs> because I was questioning things. Yeah. And, um, oh, yeah. But yeah. I, I mean, I was, I was really questioning it. And, uh, and so I was like, you know, so I refused the test. I was like, no, I I know for a fact that these are not seizures mm-hmm. that I'm having. So I'm not going to do any EEG. So I said no. And so I was like, no, why don't you send me to a cardiologist? And then I got in with a cardiologist who was amazing, who um, I told told him everything. And he's like, yeah, this looks like a POTS. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I was like, that's what I've been saying this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. That is so frustrating, though. And just, and it's, yeah, it sucks that when that happens. Going back quick too, because mm-hmm. this came to mind, random thoughts kind of come to mind, but thank you for sharing that too. That's like, yeah, I think a lot of people struggle with that and we'll be able to relate to that. Yeah. Just feeling um, like, yeah, not yeah, heard. And it's, yeah, yeah. Especially in the medical field. Okay. I can go on about that. But <laughs> so someone is uh, doing chiropractic care mm-hmm. and how does that work? Like, do you think that it's good to do chiropractic with Thai? I'm sure it depends on the person too, but like, is there a good core, like a, um, is that something that would be beneficial for right. someone to do too? Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of people who will, um, see me typically they'll, they'll get a massage first and then they'll go get an adjustment with chiropractor. Mm-hmm. Um, chiropractors love me and other massage therapists because we tend to make things like a lot looser for them. So it makes it easier to adjust the client. Ah. So, and then after that, the adjustments stay longer. So yeah. I'm like, so we make a great team. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So usually, um, somebody will see me or, you know, another massage therapist and then within like a day or two, go get an adjustment. Okay. That makes, that makes so much sense. Like, again, I just never put that together. Well, sometimes the muscles are so tight, they can actually pull things out of alignment. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, you might have like, Oh man, my neck is out. And then you get like a massage, everything gets loosened up and then your neck is probably still out. And then you go and get an adjustment. It's because the muscles are are loose enough now where they're like, okay, yeah, we can move it. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. That's such valuable information for me because as a trainer, Mm -hmm. someone comes to me and I'm, I mean, I always either say, okay, well, we should do massage or like, you should like, I ask them those questions too, if they've got massage or chiropractic care or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is such, that is such a good thing to know. So I can tell people like, we can actually do it in cohesiveness. I don't know what word I'm looking for, but together. So that way. Yeah. 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 I'm all about like integrative care. Yeah. Too, yeah. So. I love that. Is there anything else that you wanted to make sure we talk about when it comes to like time massage and stuff? Time massage. You know, like yeah. just try it. Like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> For real though, YOLO. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> No, I mean, you know, if you if you ever like on the fence about like, oh, do I want to try this thing? Just try it out, yeah. and um, you know, it's just like like with anything, like if you want to if you want to do life is too short to like just not do things, right? You know, yep. And even like taking care of yourself, like yeah, on, exactly. I know, like on your social media, you talk about like self care and and, yeah. and things like that, and it's super right. Be- that. Before you know it, like 
you know, you get, you're like, I don't know, someday you're, you're young and wild and free and you're like mm-hmm. running around and falling down stairs and you're like, oh yeah, this is fine. I can brush it off. And then mm-hmm. at some point you're in your thirties or forties and you're like, oh man, yeah, I should have taken care of my body earlier. Yes. Um, and you know, I remember like being told that all the time when I was growing up, you know, and, like now I'm like the, the old but I mean it's so true because yeah. like after I think it's after 20 the after you're 25 your body stops being able to regenerate the cells uh stop yes. regenerating as quickly so things start to slow down as far as mm-hmm. like healing ability and things like that so yeah. um really like the biggest thing when it comes to massage is like I don't do anything like, I mean, I I do stuff, but (laughs) I mean, what I do is not like, I don't actually like manipulate the muscles, like their clay to like make Mm -hmm. them looser. It's really, it's all your nervous system that does Mm -hmm. all the work. Mm -hmm. So what we're really doing is working, we're facilitating that nervous system to like, to connect the pathways that are needed for that, for your body to heal itself. So it's really, it's, on that level, it's like, okay, you know, you just, you need to take care of your nervous system because your nervous system is yes. at the core of everything. So if your like nerves are always shot because you're really stressed or you're not taking care of yourself, mm-hmm. of course you're going to be in pain. Yep. The more I'm like, I talk to people like in, whether it's like health and fitness or well, not health and fitness, more of like integrative type of care, mm-hmm. it always goes back to the nervous system. Yep. Every time. It's a control center of the body. Yeah. You know? So um, I love the nervous system. It's like this weird little funky little alien looking guy. <laughs> and all of our bodies got a brain. And then we got these like, yeah. have you seen like pictures of the nervous system? I don't know. What it, <laughs> like, well, I'm sure I have. But just the nervous system. If you take it away from the body and like the everything, it's like, it looks like an alien. Mm-hmm. It's so funky. You know what? Yeah, I have. Because it's like, yeah, like you said, the head. It's the it's brain. Like, and then, yeah, it's the, mm-hmm. the all the nerves. But I mean, it's, it's really a control center of the body. So. So, mm-hmm. um, of course you have to, you have to take care of that first mm-hmm. and then, um, you know, and then it'll tell your, your hormones, um, what to do and your hormones will tell you. It. Yeah. So when I talk to people too, who they, their bodies just all out of whack or mm-hmm. like they are, even when it comes to like weight loss and fat loss and they feel like that, like they, it's something to do with gut health, hormone health. Mm-hmm. Well, also they're hella stressed. And they're sent, they don't think, oh, yeah. maybe my central nervous system needs to get mm-hmm. down regulated or I need to like work on that. Yes. And that's, yeah. that is also a part that, of that. That's always like the, the number one thing is like work on getting into that rest and digest. We're in this, in this level always of like that fight or flight mm-hmm. and um, our bodies don't really know yet when we're being chased by a lion or when we're just like stressed out because somebody sent us a nasty email. Right. So our body's like, oh, same response. <laughs> yeah same response. So Mm -hmm. different situation, but if you're constantly in this heightened, like fight or flight mode, your body is just like overloaded on cortisol. Mm -hmm. And that's going to cause a whole host of problems for the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. Um, and including chronic pain. Yeah. Well, shit, all of these things, this is good stuff. This is like shameless plug i have an adrenal support supplement that i sell so oh, yeah, that's right yep um so that has ashwagandha in it so that will help to like calm the adrenal system mm-hmm. which will calm your nervous system so yes okay that and that's like something that you take every day you you, you can you take can. it every day yeah. yeah i would recommend it for you know like if if somebody is like constantly in that like high stress state mm-hmm. i would take like two a day for like a time eventually you won't need it all the time anymore but um you know but you have to you have to first start taking care of and a lot of people get get into this like high functioning stress state Mm -hmm. where they're just like oh well I'm fine everything's fine Mm -hmm. but they're really like this and like they're really high on that on a stress scale but like they can't see it because it's hard to see the forest through the trees yep um so if you're part of that then you can't like objectively step away from yourself and be like, Hey, you know what? You're kind of stressed out. Seriously. So yes, because when I was working uh, in Brookings mm-hmm. at a gym, I, and I loved it. Loved the people. Like it was great. Uh, but I did not, I did not realize how stressed I was mm-hmm. because like going back to what you said, like you, you can't see 
I, I didn't know I was stressed. Like I, I thought I was just fine. Mm-hmm. And until I was a certain point that I, and then I kind of knew, okay, I think I'm actually like not okay. And not like, I mm-hmm. think I'm stressed all the time. But once I left that and I came here and I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't working there. I wasn't working really as much, but I realized once I was out of that fire, I realized how stressed I really was. Mm-hmm. And that like everything changed. I mean, like even my, like physically my body changed. Yeah. Like I, and I think there's multiple things to that, but I feel like a big component was the stress. Yeah. Yeah. And your body will tell you, you know, you, you may not realize that you're stressed, but your body will tell you. Um, But I think, I think a lot of people have a hard time with body awareness. So they, they may not listen to the signs that their bodies are telling them. So I was like, I love this quote. It's, it's um, I don't, I don't know who said the quote. It's just a quote that I like, but um, it's, it's uh, if you don't listen to your body when it's whispering, you'll be forced to listen to it when it's screaming. And so um, if you start to really tune into like what your body is telling you now, then, you know, you can start to recognize the signs of stress. Um, and that's one of the things that I really try to do with every single one of my clients is get them that body awareness. And so by doing that, I ask a lot of questions. I'm like, you know, how does this feel? What do you feel here? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I kind of like help them to tune into their body by bringing that awareness to their body. Because um, I think a lot of people just don't have that like full on awareness of their body. Absolutely not. Yeah. Because I, so I have a client that I train and we were talking about this, how it was more like, around like working out she she knows that she doesn't have a lot of awareness around her body she like it's hard for her to connect her mind to like what she's Mm -hmm. doing but I'm sure the same thing like outside of it like when it comes to like stress and things like that so yeah what like what are other ways that people can start to have that body awareness other than like when they come to you yeah I mean I think uh you know like looking into like somatics like somatics are are something that you can do um what are somatics so somatics is like uh kind of tuning into like the body um so you like close your eyes and then you take breaths and then mm-hmm. you like, it's almost like a meditation. I think from what I understand about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. So like meditating, thinking about like, just like close your eyes, take some breaths and um, try to like shut out all the thoughts, but like just kind of bring, bring your awareness to your body and like where you're feeling different sensations in your body. Mm-hmm. Um, and then afterwards you can journal about like what that sensation is um, and what was coming to mind. Like, free, freehand journaling. Like that's yes. something that you can do. Um, there, there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, yoga is a really good way to like start to bring oh, some awareness yes. to your body as well. Some great yoga instructors, um, but anything that you can do that kind of connects the mind and the body. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was the first start for me was yoga. Cause then that introduced meditation, mm-hmm. yoga, meditation, and then having more awareness with like my body and my breath and all of that. And yeah. Okay. yeah. And I will say too that I, I mean, I do have another client too, that we have talked about how She's older, but we have talked about how she like wishes she would have started doing things when she was younger because she yeah. has all these like she's, you know, on she, a lot of progress has been being made, but like it takes a long time and she's yeah, definitely. wishes she would have. OK, a couple last questions. So first of all, do you ever work with people who have shoulder pain? Oh, yeah. All the time. And. Uh, OK, so <laughs> this is for Kiana. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Because I, I did ask a chiropractor. She hasn't gotten mm-hmm. in or anything, but she did. Uh, yeah. We asked, I asked a chiropractor and he thinks maybe it's rotator cuff. It's like pain, like right here. Mm-hmm. And she like sometimes can't lift it, but like, mm-hmm. so yeah, she's, I mean, obviously she wants to do better, but she's like, mm-hmm. not sure what she should do. She's like, yeah. I should just get KT tape and tape it up. I'm like, I don't know. If that K-tape is, good. it's good. I mean, yeah. K-tape works. Um, I think there, there might be something deeper going on there. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I was, it's kind of hard to say because like, like what exactly is going on? People right. ask me this all the time. Like, oh, do you work with any problems? Well, just, yeah, I do. But like, what can you be more specific yeah. about what the yeah. issue is? But uh, yeah, like shoulder, shoulders are are fun because it's a pretty complicated, kind of a complicated joint. You know, there's mm-hmm. a lot going on. There's a lot of muscles there mm-hmm. um, in and around the scapula, around the glenohumeral hum, hum, humeral joint. Yeah. So talk, <laughs> talking. <laughs> Clearly, I don't talk as much. And then, uh, yeah, like the pecs and the clavicle and all that stuff. So it's kind of a complicated joint. There's a lot of moving parts in there. A lot can go wrong with the shoulders. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, yeah, I, I mean, I do a lot with shoulders. So, yeah. 
Yeah. And then shoulders, hips, hips are another one too. Like, Oh yeah. Um, a lot of people have some, like a lot of problems with their hips. So, Mm -hmm. um, again, complicated joint, a lot of moving parts, a lot of small muscles that are holding things together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just a matter of finding like what, what's that spot. That's like where what's going on here. So, right. Um, yeah, Yeah. I would love to to help out. Okay. Kiana, you're listening. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so we've talked like a, about a lot of good stuff today. I'm mm-hmm. so excited. Um, any like lasting thoughts, a message, like anything about anything about anything that you would like to leave the little listener with that you can think of? If not, that's okay. <laughs> that's kind of a loaded question, but I know that's why I want to touch you. They're like, that's kind of a uh, I mean, there's a lot of things I could that's true. talk about, but yes. um. No, I mean, I don't think so. Okay. Just, we, this was, yeah, this was amazing. Yeah. I loved it. Um, so you're in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. If someone wants to find you mm-hmm. online or in Sioux Falls, yeah. where can they find you? Yeah. So our website, we have, well, we have two domains that'll take you to the same website. So um, the first one, fallsunwind.com. That's F A L L S U N W I N D.com. <laughs> Otherwise, unwindbodywork.biz. Mm-hmm. So unwindbodywork.biz. They'll both take the same same website, but okay. yeah. So there's that, and then um, Instagram, Unwind Body Work. Oh, we're also celebrating five year anniversary. That's um, right. That's like why we're like, oh, we should do a podcast so that we can talk about this. Yeah, what is the, the the whole point of it? Yeah. Um. Yay, ADHD. Okay. Um. So <laughs> I just thought of like five million other things uh, that we, we talked about that, talking anyway. about. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, um, five year uh, in business anniversary is coming up in November. So we're doing that. So we have a giveaway coming up on Instagram. Uh, We have over a thousand dollars in prizes. You're giving away. What was that again? Yeah, I think a month of coaching. A month of coaching. And then you're giving some some gifts too. So we have a couple of different things going on next month because it's our five year in business. And I'm super excited about it. Mm -hmm. I feel like after COVID, like hitting this five year milestone is like, feels like so much more impactful. Yeah, Um, it really is. It feels like it. Yeah. Yeah. Because we opened in 2018. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of businesses did not make it past COVID. Right. I didn't even like realize that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like... Thank you. Um, so yeah, so we're celebrating. So Instagram giveaway. So you can find us on Instagram at unwind body work. We'll have that giveaway starts November 1st and we'll do the drawing. I think November 16th is mm-hmm. when we set that up. And so stay tuned for that. And then also if you book a massage, doesn't matter if it's with me, with one of my team members, if you book a massage during the month of November, you'll get a free gift afterwards. So we have, I think, seven different businesses that have donated to this effort. So there's like several different prize, like gifts that you can choose from. If you come in for massage, you'll leave with like an extra gift, which is the massage itself is amazing. But then like afterwards you leave with a gift. It's like, yay. It's fun. Um, So there's that. And then um, we just joined the Chamber of Commerce as well. So um, I think we might, I might try to see if we can set up a ribbon cutting or something here in the near future. Yeah. Might as well just go all out. Um, I think we might decorate the office, like put up balloons or something. You know, I don't know. Just go big, but whatever. So there's that. And then Facebook, we're at Unwind Yoga Body Work. Um, Otherwise, if you're in Sioux Falls and you just type in Unwind Body Work, we'll probably come up and find us on. I think on LinkedIn is another place you can find us on. Um, I think we have a Twitter, but I don't really use it. <laughs> um, I, I think I also have a TikTok out there somewhere. But again, like I don't, I don't always use that. But yeah, I mean, I think the biggest places that you can get a hold of us, you can book a massage online on our website, okay. um, directly on our website. That's usually how we prefer people to do it, just so that they can fill out the intake form and you don't have to come in and fill out all the paperwork and all that stuff too. So Mm -hmm. our website is probably like our number one place. And then yeah, Instagram, Facebook and all that good stuff. Sweet. Okay. Good. Yeah. I was going to ask you that how people can book. So online Mm -hmm. this best. Okay. Um, all right. Well, the last and final question I always like to ask my guests this, um, so flow with the grow is the name of my podcast. What comes to mind for you? What does that mean to you? Flow with the grow. I think it's just like, I guess for me, it would be like, you know, just kind of let let that growth happen and just mm-hmm. kind of like melt into, into that, like growth, the experience of growth and just like kind of, mm. um, allowing life to 
like just give you what you need it or mm-hmm. what you need at the time, you know, things I like love that. that. So experience yeah. growth. I like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for doing this yeah. with me. Thanks for having this me. This is fun. Yes. Yeah. I like I learn a lot more about you and your business too, even. <laughs> so it was great. And just about things. Yeah. So, I'll awesome. do it again too. Yeah, we should. All right, cool. Yay. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Flow With The Grow. I'll see you next week for your daily dose of positivity and growth.